way of serving though. Here's some Sorry, I hit the uh, sensor button. Here's some Enchant World is what I said. That's what I said. Uh, Nyx Weaver. So this is a four or five mana rare that is new, uh, rare or mythic that is new, and that is a creature or a legendary creature or an enchantment creature uh, from after Journey to Nyx. Uh, where's Magic Origins? Guilt Leaf Winnower. Okay. <clears throat> Four mana. Green X Legendary Creature. Oh. Oh, it could be the Surok. Surok. I easy money easy capital E capital Z capital money Eggs. Uh, Eggs. seismic lawns back e to the 16th GSX. month love Ciroc way too much uh, yeah this card rules I really enjoy this magic card um, it's a cool commander too if you've ever wanted to build like what if mono green stompy like I'm talking leatherback Bayloth and friends uh could be played in commander Sorok is a great commander for that and is kind of like broken's not the right word because it's overused but it is just so it's just so wild how quickly the tune of players change when you're like yeah you can play aggro in commander and then they just you just like smash face with this somebody rasps the board and then your next turn you're like okay uh, Dungrove Elder into Serac and uh, kill you. It's it's great. <clears throat> it's great. Uh, blank, comma. Blank the blank. That's an odd mana cost. Is it a spirit? No. Why you got remainder tech? Uh, remainder? <laughs> yeah. Why you got remainder text? It has an activated ability. Gets minus X minus X until end of turn. It's got a keyword up here. It's not Kage Maro. Minus X minus X. Minus X minus X. One, two. Oh, could it be? Um, it's not Villas, is it? I forget Villas's name. It's Villas. Uh, <sighs> Villas. Um, Something of something. I forget Villas's name. Does anybody remember Villas's name? It's like, I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you, why I'm asking you. I can't, I can't see anything and I can't actually get some help. Um, two. Yeah, they're both worth. Uh, something of something. I think it is. Hmm. It's like something of blood, I think. Bane, no, Bane of blood. That's not, that doesn't work. It's something of blood. Boo boo. <laughs> I found that way too funny. Oh, yes. Versus Boo Boo. Ready? Fighting Polygon team. Uh, not Bonder. 
broker. It's uh, broker of blood. Yes, Villas broker of blood. All right. <clears throat> Well, this card was in M20. I thought this card was in something else. Cool. All right, we got there. Had to had to do a couple of guesses, but all right, now now for hard mode. My guess is it's a creature. Uh this, no, hold on. C R E A O oh, I I think it's a creature. Creature blank blank. When blank blank enters the battlefield, draw Oh. Hmm. And no D's no no D's here either. What? Add dad when assass no when add add enters the battlefield it's not draw gain. Each when added 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 enters the battlefield, each player each player sacrifices a <laughs> creature. A what creature? No. Oh, it's a cursed marauder. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. A cursed marauder, a card you may see me play in an upcoming modern tournament on Magic: The Gathering Online Edition. Uh, Goomblax, back for the fifth month. Fuck these ads. I'm trying to watch Spellify. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Glad to have you. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, let's talk business. What are we doing here? Well, tomorrow is the Bloomboro PPR at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. This also means that the full set is out. The set has been fully previewed. Um, we can talk about all of the Magic the Gathering cards. Because, well, you're going to see basically all of them uh, tomorrow on the on that. The set is cute. It's cool. I mean, I haven't played in the limited of it, but, you know, just getting to look at the cards in real life is pretty cool. This means that we have uh, some previews to talk about, or at least we have what is left. If you haven't seen the first two set review episodes... Uh, you can find them on the YouTube channel. Uh, we have been going through Wooberg and enough of the cards were actually out that we were able to do a reasonable chunk of the cards. Um, up until we haven't done colorless and we haven't done lands. We also haven't done some of the cards, uh, all the cards basically from the commander decks or from the... Um, uh, all the cards from the commander decks or uh, like some of the special guests or, or whatnot. So I think what we should do is uh, typically what I would do is I would do the catch up. So all the cards that we haven't talked about and then we carry on, but I don't want there just to be a chunk of um, call this cards and lands at the end. So I want to go through and do that. I want to uh, just cover the call list cards, cover the lands, and then we can cover the cards that uh, were previewed and we have not talked about no matter the colors. Uh, 
let me, before I do that, let me get some, some cool ambient music in the background. Wow. Everybody loves cool, droning, calm, ambient music. If Ben was a card, he would fit both those artifacts, oh, both those categories. What, cutest and funniest? That's me. It's me, big, big cutie, big cutie boom boom. Great, we have very low humming, ambient, not humming, but low ambient music. I'm gonna take those off, cause it's fucking hot. <clears throat> and we can start talking about some of these cards. Mind you, uh, the first couple of cards are not particularly good. This one's kind of good. We can talk about this one because it's technically an egg of sorts, but it has my least favorite line of text on it, uh, which is put it on top. Fountain Port Bell. One generic artifact for, uh, one generic mana for an artifact that says when Fountain Port Bell enters, you may search your library for a basic land, reveal it, shuffle your library and put that card on top. Pay one, sacrifice the bell, draw a card. Wheeler hates topping, no. What are you nuts? I've I made a living off of that. That's 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 my livelihood right there. In all the different ways that you can think of. Um yeah, I I kind of hate the fact that this card just puts it on top. Like I understand why they don't want to have a one mana artifact that puts it into your hand that you can then cash it in cuz then it's a one mana card that's going to draw two cards for such little value or little mana. Um yeah, it, uh, it's not particularly great. It's not great. I guess the fact that you may search it just makes it two mana cycle this. Um, not not a card that is going to be playable in uh, the formats that I want to talk about. Although, where was it? I saw... I saw a tweet. I don't want to blow up this person's spot because they're just a random person on the internet and I don't want to be rude. There are people on the internet I do want to be rude to. I, I had a whole rant about that. Um, but I, I saw this that I thought was wild because as soon as this card got previewed, I tweeted, I this was during the like, um, yeah, this will be a thing. As soon as it got previewed, I tweeted this out. And this was one of the first replies is, I've seen some people using this as an alternate brainstorm shuffle, just failed to find on the ETB. No, you haven't. What do you mean? What the fuck do you mean you've seen people using this as something? No, you haven't. You haven't seen shit. This card literally came out like seconds but like ago. <laughs> like, like... Like less than an hour after, I mean, not even that. No, 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 no. Nobody's playing this card with Brainstorm. Nobody's jumping to play this card. Over, like if it was a commander or whatever, I'd get it, right? I've seen people using this as an alternate Brainstorm shuffle just fails on the ETB. Similar effects, why didn't they clarify that? If they said like, well, at least you could shuffle Brainstorm with this if you fail to find, that's still bad uh, for a variety of reasons. It, it's just so fucked. The worst part is two people agreed with them. I don't get it. Hopper? Not a real format. Anyways, <clears throat> on to Heirloom Epic. Uh, one generic for an artifact. Pay four, tap, draw a card. For each mana in this ability's activation cost, you may tap an untapped creature you control rather than pay that mana. Activate only as a sorcery. I mean, Popper, it is a one mana artifact, which like Popper, it, the whole, Popper as a whole is just about using artifacts to sacrifice to deadly dispute or not get blown out by, um, you know, uh, Monvuli Acid Moss or whatever. Wretched format. Yeah, this book rules. Um, very cool. This card, I imagine this card will also be pretty good in limited. 
I don't think this card is particularly worthwhile in uh, Singleton. Um, it's just a very expensive cost where you also, it requires you to have plenty of creatures to use. Like you can go half and half, which is kind of nice. Like you can go two and two, but yeah, activate only as a sorcery is another big thing. So you can't like keep up blockers and then potentially do this. That one, that might push the card into playability territory. Uh, but as it stands, it's just not good enough. A uh, cute card though. And I imagine it'll be like a big commander card and certainly uh, probably reasonable for limited. I could see this showing up in limited. Uh, patchwork banner, three mana artifact. As it ETBs, you choose a creature type. Creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Tap, add one mana of any color. Uh, this is a very good commander card. I do not believe this card is worthwhile in any of the creature, uh, the typal decks that uh, see play in our formats. The rate is just not good enough, even though this effectively you know, gives one mana back. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just, th these just don't do enough. This is a commander card through and through. Yeah, Rally the Ranks, but a mana rock. And Rally the Ranks is like, not great. <laughs> like, when people, people have kind of figured out that in 1v1, you want your lords to be creatures. You don't want them to be uh, attached to other cards, you know? Uh, this artwork is uh, very cute. This card's not... I mean, this card's, you know, annoying for limited, but not for our formats. <laughs> I just love the rabbits with the little, uh, like, pine cone or um, conifer uh, arrows. They're very cute. Mm -hmm. Tangled Tumbler. I'm not super enthused with this card. It's very expensive. All right, great. Well, are there, all, all the artifacts uh, stink. Glad of it. I mean, there's some artifacts in um, the Commander product that we can talk about. So I'm just going to tackle that as a whole. Uh, Fabled Passage is back, which is um, kind of neat. That's it. It's just a good card to have in standard. Shuffling in standard is obviously a little awkward, but this card, this card is fine. Oh boy. Uh, Fountain Port. Tap. It's a land. Tap. Add a colorless. Pay two. Tap. Sack a token. Draw a card. Pay three. Tap. Pay one life. Make a one one fish token. Uh, and pay four. Tap. Create a treasure token. Uh, this is a pretty cool land that I don't mind for the Snacrifice or Game Objects deck. Um, it's obviously a little awkward playing a colorless utility land in a three color deck, but thankfully the two three color decks that really um, kind of orient themselves or even Food Fight, right? Uh, the Those decks, they are green base and uh, I mean, shit. We're getting Birds of Paradise. Your mana's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, trading post on a land. Uh, cost of inclusion, incredibly low because it's a land. Because it's a colorless land, it's a little higher, but uh, it's still very, very reasonable. Just anytime you have a land that could do multiple things with all those things being like, I don't know, being able to draw a card, cashing in on a treasure or a food token or chump, you block with a token, you stack it to draw a card, pretty strong. Being able to make tokens... Um, and then obviously being able to just like ramp you if you need to, uh, quite good, quite good. Yeah. And we've seen how like, um, Murex, how, uh, pop popular Murex has been. This can actually make tokens that can block. That's wild. Murex obviously gives you the one shot of activating for uh, a colored mana, but this has more long-term benefits, um, especially because the tokens can block. That That is huge, right? Uh, Murex tokens not being able to block means that uh, the mites are mostly uh, there to be aggressive or to be bodies that you can sacrifice to something else. 
This is yeah, it doesn't even come into play tapped, which is funny because the one one fish tokens are um I believe they're all just on gift of fish, right? Oh no, the uh the white the white elemental that has a brick of text and the uh bird that makes fish tokens when other birds come into play. Okay, so fish tokens are made uh, through other means, but um, if you're giving your opponent a fish, then they can have a fish. They're artifacts, which matters. The fish aren't artifacts here, right? They're just 1-1 one, one blue fish tokens? What do you mean the treasure that it's making is an artifact? Because that's pretty good. Oh, the mites are artifacts. Yes, that could be relevant. That does, that, that could be relevant. I'm not entirely saying that Fountain Port is going to be replacing every deck, like Murex and all the decks playing Murex. There's a chance that they're both going to see play. It's just there may be decks that currently play Murex uh, that may want to swap to Fountain Port because they can't take advantage of the artifact and want to have a more, uh, a grindier, more long term card that has better defensive tools attached to it. Good card. Uh, Lily Pad Village. There's a cycle of these. I believe they are mostly unplayable. They are a series of lands that all come to play untapped. They add a colorless and then they can add a, a Wooberg, right? Depending on the color. Um, and uh, you can only use that mana to cast creature spells. Then they all have an ability uh, that has like a cost and tap it, do a thing, but only if one of the little critter types is there. So Lily Pad Village, tap for a colorless, tap for a blue, only used for creatures. Uh, pause for uh, blowing my nose. And we're back. Uh, and blue tap surveil two. Activate only if a bird, frog, otter, or rat enter the battlefield under your control this turn. This is a bit of a, a tough one to, to justify here. Um, I think they're all pretty bad. Although I think if any of them, I'm, I'm trying to remember them. I don't I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. So let's just go by uh, card by card. Um, this one, the creature types are not the easiest to get going. Um, and also the payoff is like, payoff is honestly not that bad but like if i think of the birds like a blue white skies deck this is pretty awkward because it's not adding colored mana for all your spells because that's a deck with you know uh flyers and tempo cards and doesn't really use its graveyard too much frogs uh i mean you know what angels frog dredge deck sure this card's probably a slam dunk um otters the there are a couple otters that'll show up in like blue red prowess and whatnot uh, which can use Surveil, but again, that's a spell-heavy deck. And then Rats are... <sighs> no, it's blue. Don't worry about it. Can't cast Mana Drain. Lupin Flower Village. Uh, this is the white one. Taps out a white, uh, only for creature spells. Taps out a Cullis. Uh, one in a white. Tap Sacrifice Lupin P uh, Flower Village. You may, or sorry, you look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a bat, bird, mouse, or rabbit card from among them, put them into your hand, and then the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This one is not that bad for death and taxes, like mono white aggro or mono white, even like a ruin your evening style deck, uh, because that is a deck that plays all of these creature types. Um, being able to cash in your land to draw a new card and that card being a creature is pretty nice. Uh, there are bats, there are birds, there are mice, and there are rabbits that can show up. Uh, you just may have to, if you're including this card in your deck, um, you may have to make certain considerations to your threats. Uh, like, this is not just a card that you slap into every version of DNT or every version of Mono White. Um, it is likely one that you add to your deck if you are on... Uh, let me see... going to i feel finding lo looking up all of these is, is really tough um 
because I want to look at cards from Bloomboro, but I also want to look at cards that are legal in Gladiator. Because there are some new cards in Gladiator that obviously this is going to be able to hit. But like hitting Aven Interrupter, Aven Mind Sensor. Oh, it's going to show me the, the Bloomboro cards. Interesting. Uh, Aven Interrupter, Aven Mind Sensor, Jackdaw Savior. Um, you could hit, I mean, you could be on Healer's Hawk. And hell, you could be on Healer's Flock. Uh, you could be that Life Gain Bat, the, the newer one. Although that's that's like a white X deck. It still is going to be a creature deck. Uh, Cheeky House Mouse is a totally reasonable magic card. Why are only some of these updated as legal in Gladiator? That is so weird. Uh, and then, yeah, like Regal Bunicorn, uh, Pollen Shield Hair, Claim Jumper, Warren War Leader, season, uh, Seasoned Warren Guard. I guess. Yeah, you could hit like a deep cavern bat and stuff. It's harder to justify these as you start adding more colors uh, to your deck. That's uh, one of the issues. There's not really any shapeshifters uh, or changelings that you could play this card in your deck with too. It is kind of neat that it is only, um, I mean, this doesn't actually matter that much for Gladiator, but it is kind of neat that it doesn't say like um, creature, like bat creature, bird creature, etc. So, hey. If they ever come out with like a, uh, a lizard tar fire, the stocks on these cards are going to be through the roof. Mud flat village. Oh, this card. Yeah, this is this is the one that I could see uh, showing up. Yeah, you can find your crib swap. Uh, this adds colorless, adds a black only for creature spells. One in a black tap, sack it. Turn target bat, lizard, rat, or squirrel. Um, to your hand. So this one is a little bit easier to get going. And the, the targets are pretty scary, right? Like uh, Deep Cavern Bat, Essence Channeler, uh, the 2-1 that when you gain life, your opponent loses life, the, the new Bob, uh, that Orzov Bat that's pretty scary. <laughs> I mean, Aklazots is technically a bat, which is kind of funny. Um... What do you got for rats? Uh, for rats, I mean, ooh, I could put this in the, uh, the <laughs> I could put this in the ruin your evening rat deck. Um, but yeah, finding a pack rat, finding a tangled colony, uh, Lord Skitter is pretty hot. The fact that this can, you're probably not playing it in this deck, but you can get back like a Nashi or that Vren um, is kind of neat. You can get back ink eyes. It gets back Grease Fang. There's some squirrels as well that are like pretty reasonable. Ravenous Squirrel. Um, you can get back the... You can get back Chatterfane, Camellia. You can get back um, Vine Reap Mentor. Oh my god, it combos with Curious Forager. Wow. Speaking of rats, am I excited to pay four mythic wild cards for rats? That somebody will have to pay me to do that. Somebody will have to pay me to do that. Uh, Oak Hollow Village. Tap for a colorless green. Uh, tap for a green only on creatures. Green tap. Put a one one counter on each frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel you control that enter the battlefield this turn. This is another one where I think this one may. This might be fine to play in like a green X, like mid rangey like tokens kind of deck because there are some raccoons and some squirrels that you're going to be playing. Um, it being able to put them like, I, I was thinking about this when I was looking at rabbits for standard, like thinking about building rabbits in standard. Did I say target? I meant each because it says each it's Orin reef, the vast wood, but for, you know, frogs, rabbits, raccoons, etc. Uh, being able to put it on all your rabbits is uh, kind of hot for that. Like, this is this is a fucked up ability. Especially because Offspring is pretty popular in these cards. Uh, so getting multiple bodies out to just put a bunch of counters on them. Pretty nice. Yeah. Low cost of inclusion. Uh, again, because it's green. We're talking about aggressive creature decks. This thing just really needs to do its thing like once or twice to really earn its keep. 
This card's also quite good, but it's a little awkward. Uh, the Rock Face Village, this is the red one. Uh, red tap, target lizard, mouse, otter, or raccoon you control gets plus one plus zero and gains haste until end of turn. Being able to give something haste for one mana, like a hand weird battleman style card, is kind of funny. Um, the fact that it's very limited to what you target is a bit awkward, right? Like the we've, we've covered some mice and some lizards and even some otters that may see play in uh, some of these decks, but I, I'm not super excited to play this kind of card especially in like an aggressive red deck where you may keep like a two lander and you're you just got some spells kicking around that you awkwardly want to double spell and having this around might uh, prevent you from doing that <clears throat> three tree city legendary land as it enters you pick a creature type tap for a colorless two tap choose a color Add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control of the chosen type. So, you know what's cool about Nykthos? Uh, Nykthos, I mean, Nykthos is obviously broken. Uh, but Nykthos, if you have an old growth troll, Nykthos goes even, right? If you have like a Cavalier of Thorns, Nykthos goes even. If you have some Planeswalkers or some enchantments lying around, to contribute to Nykthos, it's going to start going even. Um, the fact that you need to just have three creatures for in play for this to go even is fucked. That is... That's, you Three creatures is already so many creatures. So many creatures. Not to mention all these creatures need to be the same type. Um, this has been my favorite card for just really showcasing how terrible Commander has made people's card evaluation. Like, like, it's just, I saw so many people being like, this is basically Gaia's Cradle. This is basically, it's basically Gaia's Cradle. It's basically, uh, a Nykthos. And it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? What what are you on about? This card's pre-selling for 40 du bucks. 40 ducks? I would rather have 40 ducks than 40. Oh, there's a bunch of cool artworks though. Um to to evaluate for this card to evaluate this card though. Um yeah, it's it's really bad. I would try it in elves. But that's a deck that already just like will go super hard on trying to uh, like overextend. Like elves players already have a punishment kink where they're like, ooh, I just put five creatures on the board. Oh, I hope nobody casts a pyroclasm. And then you're like, uh, Brotherhood's end? They're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no oh oh my elves Ooh, it's like oh okay well why'd you play all your creatures out oh i don't know it was just so tempting uh but that's it my favorite artwork for this i ooh. I think I like Autumn the best. I think Autumn is the best here. Like, it's just so cozy. You know? Gr I guarantee people... Summer is also a good call. Uh, or sorry, not... I, I like Autumn and I like Spring. Summer is fine. So I feel like Summer is very close to the original like that's just when the original is is taking place i think winter is uh no no you're uh, what are you doing no you you're thinking of mishra's uh factory this is not mishra's factory yeah no it's uh let's, let's get real here spring is quite nice too i really like spring um i like 
spring for this set as well because <laughs> it's always so rainbow. Have you seen... Check this shit out, by the way. Oh my god, I'm going to have to try and log into Facebook. So there's a, a piece of artwork for exotic... Um, ooh. Should I bid on this Gitrog monster watercolor? Oh, it's very small. It's so small. <laughs> when is this ending? This ends on Monday? Check out the uh, the orchard, yeah. Let me, let me find it. I saw it on the art group. I mean, I saw it in the, I saw it in the, whatchamacallit, the, the card file. Look at this fucking art. Incredible. Ron Spears. This is Ron Spears Exotic Orchard. This is so, this gives big springtime in your, in Bloomboro, in Everdell, in, you know, Red Wall. Like it really hits. You know, really hits. Yeah, it's a Nils Hom. Uh, get wrong. This is me trying to put a smoothie together. And I think this this all kind of connects. Like the you get the golden sunlight shining through all the the rainbow colors. It, it, it's just so pretty. Uh, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it for the catch up. Uh, or sorry, not for the catch up. That's it for the. Uh, Artifacts and the Lance. Hey, the fact that I'm stumbling on my, all my words, uh, can you tell that I was making hashtag content for uh, 12 hours yesterday and uh, was in the sun quite a bit this morning while also making content? All right, let's see if there are any cards that we have missed. First, I'll go through the... <laughs> Crumb and get it. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was... I usually am... I mean, I'm always a little cooked by the sun. Uh, I call it genetics and permanent skin damage. Um, but, yeah, especially so for this. Ooh, we'll, we'll get to you in a second there. Um, the tokens are so cute. I do want to look at the offspring tokens. <laughs> Very cute. Very cute. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I this is one of my favorite rabbits in the set as well. Uh this one. The intrepid rabbit. It's so cute. I fucking look at this guy. <laughs> look at this guy. What's he doing? What is he doing? Who are, you, who are you threatening with that little blade there, buddy? And he's got the he's got the like the dandelion lantern. Oh, it's just so cute. Oh man, this set's great. I may actually just collect a a full set of Bloomboro just to have in a binder to look at. Just like, just I just want to look at it. I just want to look at these cards. This card's also kind of cracked for limited too, right? Two and a white for a 3-2 rabbit soldier with offspring one. And then it has one of DTB's target creature gets plus one plus one to end a turn. So for four mana, you get two bodies. Uh, four, three worth of stats that buff something for plus two, plus two. Or buffs two things for plus one, plus one. Um, so it can trigger Valiant on two different creatures. It can make a thing bigger. It can make other... You know, it's just very strong. I think for a common... Um, this card's also kind of funny. Jolly gerbils. What in a way for a 2-3 hamster citizen whenever you gift a card, draw a card? Or whenever you give a gift. So it doesn't even have to be gift a card. You can give somebody a fish and you get to draw a card. Very cute. <clears throat> mm, we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I love that the hell <laughs> has everybody seen the cat? Like it's the it's a cat with like a a, a melon helmet. <laughs> Getting big melon helmet vibes from this chunky boy. Oh, so cute. Oh, this is a cute wall token. It's a bird's nest. Aww. Look at that. It's a bird's nest. There's got to be other cards in the set too, right? Have I really talked about everything from the main set? Oh, oh. <laughs> this is now this is the kind of stream you were hoping for, right? Just sun cooked Wheeler giggles at little rabbits. <laughs> Oh, 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 little guy. Uh, oh, this is a new one. Azure Beast Binder. One and a blue for a 1-3 Rat Rogue with Vigilance. Uh, Azure Beast Binder can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or greater. Whenever Azure Beast Binder attacks, up to one target artifact, creature, or planeswalker in opponent controls loses all abilities until your next turn. If it's a creature, it also has base power and toughness 2-2 two, two, until your next turn. This is a very odd card. Um, the stat line is a little awkward. Like a 1-3 Vigilance that just has effectively skulk that that i like this card can like attack pretty easily um and then like what are we doing like giving making a creature lose all abilities and putting into a 2-2 two -two plays well into playing cheap removal spells on it um bricking an artifact is kind of interesting um yeah, it just feels a little weird in 1v1 competitive. It, it definitely feels like a commander plant. More so than, admittedly, a lot of the other set. A lot of, a lot of The rest of the set, I feel like it does a pretty good job when I look at this card. Uh, or, sorry, a lot of the, the rest of the set does a pretty good job of when you look at it, you go like, oh yeah, you want me to buy four copies of, the, of this for standard or whatever. I get it. Um, but this one just feels... Like, it's a cool card design. I just don't know who it's for or what it's... Like, I kind of get what it's trying to do. I don't know if it's succeeding at that. And yeah, it could just be a, a plant for ninjutsu stuff. Which is, I guess, neat. Uh, my name is Boda. Hey, Ben. I took your Ben Ben list and played it the other day to some good fun. I noticed I run wheels rather than other red card draw. What guides the building decision? Two things. One, uh, it's a Ben Ben deck, and my name is Ben Wheeler. So it feels on theme, right? I'm not going to build my deck and not include wheels. Uh, and then secondly, um, the deck already has a lot of cards that provide like a steady flow of cards. Right? You have your war rooms and your thematic compasses and you're just really looking to hit your land drops and, and like, you know, um, it doesn't play Maze Mind Tome. But I don't really want to play like Reckless Impulse and, and Friends. There was one card I thought about playing. The um, It's from OTJ Commander. What is it? Embrace the Unknown? I think it's Embrace the Unknown. Yeah, I thought about playing this card, and I might. It's three mana sorcery. You exile the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you can play those and as retrace. So it's really good on those turns where you draw a land, then you have one of your like uh, land tutors, and then you could just retrace it and you know try to hit more cards. Hey, it's Benny Wheels. Hey, everybody. Graham here. Uh, Dazzling Denial. One and a blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays two. 
If you control a bird, counter that spell unless its controller pays four instead. Um, this card's kind of funny. Legal gladiator type bird. I feel like I've done this so many times. I blame the fact that I uh, <laughs> just refer to anything with that is flying as a bird. Yeah, it's a worse lofty denial, but it is kind of neat that you can play multiple sort of lofty denials. And like, if we're talking about like blue white skies or whatever, you know, we got Mockingbird, Judge is Familiar. Um, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Ledger Shredder, Plume Creed, Escort. Uh, Watcher of the Spheres, Aven Interrupter, obviously Mind Sensor, Empyrean Eagle. Like often early on when you are less likely to have a bird, uh, counter unless they pay two is going to fulfill that. Um, and then in the mid to late game where you are more likely to have a bird, counter unless they pay four is gonna be much more needed, especially if you wanna brick cheap disruptive cards that you wanna have an answer for. We have laps counter drain, how many more do you need? I mean, Typically in a deck like that, you're probably looking to pay six or seven, right? And so if you are on like a flyers, cheap white removal counter magic, um, and we're playing like mana drain, counter spell, memory lapse, lofty denial, this card uh, could play the new, the gift a card too. Because giving your opponent a tapped, uh, giving your opponent a card or whatever for the tempo is okay. Uh, you could play like Spell Pierce, Spell Snare. Um, who knows? We might get Mana Leak soon. I don't know. I could foresee it if you're looking to hit a very specific threshold of counter spells. Like this, this is reasonable. The, the, uh, the counter spells that we have at two mana are not that great. So having something like this is like, in, it's very niche what I'm describing, but um, it's a thing that has shown up. People are evidently invested in trying out this deck. And if you are looking at playing that kind of deck, you do need to have like a density of these cards or else you're just playing, uh, you're just kind of playing trash and hoping that your spells line up or that your opponent's gonna fold to uh, birds. Yeah, Memory Lapse is cracked. That card is unbelievable. Not a real magic card. Did you know this card uh, is probably going to go in mono blue? Oh, 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 cute little bird. Cute bird, cute bird. Mm. Uh, anything else in blue anything else in blue looking for blue cards that I missed shore up's a reprint oh this isn't exactly that relevant for most people but I'm going to play Sky Skipper Duo in my Mono Blue Ameria Yorian deck. There you go. You think the animals wear too many human clothes for your taste? What? I think that's the funny part. Is that it has big, um, like, kid wearing their parents' clothes vibes. This is a new one. Uh, spell Gyre. Two, two blue for an instant. Choose one. Counter target spell or surveil two and then draw two cards. The flexibility on this is nice. It is four mana. Um, but being able to hold this up and just like, well, do what it says on the box is kind of neat. I'd consider trying this out in um, blue-white. You get like two draw spells and I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be playing. 
Look, you can you could pry uh, Snix's revelation from my cold dead hands, but also uh, even I know I shouldn't be playing this card. We have kind of moved away from playing the Glimmer of Genius style cards, um, but having one or two of them is a totally reasonable approach to blue white control. And uh, yeah, this card is flexible enough that, yep, it just. Sometimes you hold up this mana and you're like, oh, I wish I had a counter spell, but I have this draw spell. Or you're like, oh, I left that mana for a counter spell. My opponent didn't do anything. You want to cash it in. Pretty neat. People play Seinfeld and Gladiator. Uh, they try. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not great. This card's actually not that bad. Uh, Storm Chaser's Talent. One blue for an enchantment class. When Storm Chaser's Talent enters, you create a 1-1 one, one blue and red otter token with prowess. Uh, level 2 for 3 and a blue. When this class becomes level 2, you return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And then level 6, whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red otter token with prowess. So a 1-1 one, one prowess, this is kind of funny because people look at 1-1 one, one prowess creatures and they're like, whoa. This has got to be really good because Monastery Swift Spear is really good. Let me tell you this. You know why Monastery Swift Spear is good? It's not even the haste. It's the second point of toughness. Uh, the fact that you can like make that toughness eggs, go up eggs, just means that it, it just makes eggs. double blocking so fucking difficult or even blocking properly, right? Just it's just fewer spells to get their creature out of range of dying while still giving it enough juice to kill your creature. Um, so one ones with prowess are not the most exciting, but if we are playing a prowess deck with a high density of prowess cards, this is a non-creature spell that makes a creature with prowess, much like that uh, sorcery, the two mana sorcery that makes one that has flashback. Um, that's kind of neat. Uh, four mana is a lot of mana, but you basically just like break even because you're playing a one mana spell that makes eggs, another permanent. Eggs, and so e just eggs. like being able to play this and get something out of it that also late game will trigger your other cards that give a shit about this. Great. And then if you find yourself in a bit of a uh, awkward spot, then you can make this a five mana card that uh, makes a bot. This is like a five mana or a Kaomancer, right? You play this, make your 1-1, one, one, and then pay four to return it immediately. And then if you're really getting late game, boom, six mana. Which is like, okay. It's like a shark typhoon, kind of like a monastery mentor sort of card. Obviously only triggers off instants and sorceries. So that could be a little tricky, but it's a one mana card. <laughs> It's a one mana card that does all this that is just going to still trigger your other cards with prowess uh, and makes the thing with prowess. That's that's good enough for me. Fuck, I keep closing the other window. My Gaming Rage, welcome back for the 17th month. How you doing? How you been? Thank you so much for all the support. Yeehaw indeed. I hope you're doing well. Uh, and Jay in the Water for the 19th month. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, God bless. Look at you. 19 months. Wowie Zowie. Uh, thank you so much for the support. But nothing left over in blue. <clears throat> mm. ba -ba -ba. Anything in black. Ba -ba -ba. Let's see if there's black cards. Ba -ba -ba. I don't think there are black cards. Ba -ba -ba. Probably no black cards. We've talked about all of these. All of these. Except for this card, but I don't think that card's pretty good. I do not think this card is good. I don't think this card is good. Oh, this shit. Okay, one other thing. Why is it that when you post things online, People reply with the biggest Dumbo responses that you can expect. Remember, <laughs> I post on Twitter about uh, Fell 
Hold on. I post about Feed the Cycle and Fell. These are both uncommon kill spells uh, that more or less in this set do the same thing, given the fact that there are not many Planeswalkers around. So like for the limited environment or whatever, they're going to be pretty straightforward. Obviously, one is sorcery speed, one is instant speed, and they have different requirements, but still feed the cycle and fell do very similar things. There are plenty of times where these two cards are just kill a creature, right? There's a different cost associated. There's a different speed associated with that cost. And yeah, this is like a cool, like Herloon Minotaur gray ogre scenario of like, yeah, if you pay an additional black, you get to do this whenever and you get some extra flexibility. And then there's also the, the forage or whatever. Um, and I said, it feels a bit weird to have these both in the same set and the same rarity because yeah, a bit weird. That's it. All I said was a bit weird for the reasons that I just explained there. And somebody replied with like, uh, there was one reply that was like, one's instant and one is sorcery speed. Where it's like, yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> like, I can read the cards. And I read the cards before posting the cards, right? I would hope that people would at least give a modicum of credit towards my ability to read what the card does. And then I got this shit. A lot of cards playing in the same space. There are also like four, three to four mana and some life for cards. Huh? I know a lot of cards play in it. Like, it's just like, it's just like, hey, uh, just a heads up. They're, they're all types of removal spells in the same space and they post a common while missing the entire fucking point of like, yeah, this is a different rarity. This, <laughs> this is a different rarity with different context, with different like giving your opponent things and you losing life and synergies. This card isn't just a kill spell. This is a card that does additional shit and more so than feed the cycle and does so at a different rarity, which is going to have a different, <laughs> is going to have a different impact on the limited environment, which is what I am referring to, which is wild to me. And then, <laughs> And then I got this one. This is why I don't tweet. I assume this meant Tau. Too hard black removal at uncommon isn't weird these days. OTJ had shoot the sheriff and unfortunate accident, for instance. Let me pull up what these cards do. <laughs> let me let me pull up what these cards do. Shoot the sheriff is a two mana instant at uncommon that says destroy target non outlaw creature in an outlaw set the whole set is more or less based around outlaws unfortunate accident is a spree card where if you choose to select the mode of destroy target creature that's four mana 
but also you have the make a mercenary, but also you have a kill a thing and make a mercenary. It's a fucking modal card that has mana points at two, four, and five. These are not equivalent cards. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> like I feel... These are two cards at uncommon when there's like, what? It's just Ral, right? Can you can you open the, the Planeswalkers in packs? Like in draft packs? If so, then like it's a little different, but there's only one like Planeswalker in the main set, right? You can get, you can get Jace. I don't think so. Yeah, it's just like... It's just Ral, the others are in collector boosters. Okay, so this card more like 99% of the time, right? Is just going to be destroy target creature. <laughs> How the fuck do you get me being like, oh, this is a little weird. Having this card, which will effectively just destroy target creature, but potentially at two mana. Uh, and this card at two mana, just being destroy target creature, right? Like very similar cards, incredibly similar cards. How do you see me being like, oh, this is weird that these are both in the file at uncommon. And your reaction is, no, this is normal. Check this shit out. Oh, <laughs> oh. No, dude, this is normal. Anyways, check out this hard removal. Check out, check out this hard removal. <laughs> check, check out, check out this fucking hard removal, dude. 69. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, 69 outlaws and how many of these fuckers are rares and mythics? Hard removal. <laughs> yeah, these are basically the same card. Two mana destroy, like, how many creatures are in OTJ? Creature set, or type creature set OTJ. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, like, 30% of the set. So, shoot the sheriff. Uh, obviously, this doesn't uh, factor in rarity collation. But like, if you just go by the percentage of cards in OTJ that are outlaws, uh, we are looking at, well, no, it's gotta be more than that, right? Cause it's like 69 out of 158. A little more than that. Like that's, that's a big fucking deal. I, I just, I just, Yeah, this is this is why I don't post. <laughs> this is why I don't post. Because I don't have the, I don't have the energy to just reply to every single comment and be like, "No, you're wrong." Or like, mm, "No, that's not what I'm saying." <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyways, what was I talking about? We were talking about magic cards. Do we ever do card opening here? Uh, yeah, sure. <sighs> I'm opening a Bloomboro pre-release kit. And, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, no freaking way. Oh my God, oh my, oh my God, we hit a planes! We hit a planes! <laughs> we hit a planes! <laughs> Uh, not really. Not really, Zeko. Occasionally we do. Occasionally if I have product, we do.
You know, you know what I did pick up? You know what I did open? Which product I did open? Uh, I opened the box of cards we had at the office. I'm getting my bunnies ready. I'm getting my I'm getting my bunnies ready. This isn't a pack opening channel. I mean, we could open packs. I don't buy packs. I just get, you know, we we get a lot of product from Wizards. We can make this a uh, a card shuffling ASMR channel. Ooh. Hey, you like that? Hey, you like that? Yeah, I'm trying to get these bad boys uh, MP. Yeah, <laughs> card ASM shuffling ASMR channel. Um. Uh... Need mouth sounds? Mm. Oh, mamma mia. Mamma mia. Is this doing it? Local game story ASMR? What the fuck? Why are you targeting me? Oh, what the fuck? Why are you targeting me? You fucking. Oh no, my big gulp. Oh, I dropped my big gulp. Wow, it's really like I'm back. <laughs> it's like I'm back at an LGS. They let you bring big gulps? No. When I ran the commander night locally, Way back in the day. I put a kibosh on big gulps. Just like, nope. Not happening. You've, you're too quirked up. You've had too much soda. You're going to spill something. For the love of God, you are of the legal age to vote. I am asking you to eat some real food. Or at least to not bring that dangerous food into the store. Drink on the floor. Oh, well, that's the funny thing. He's like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to spill the drink on the card, so I'll put it on the floor. And then naturally, somebody knocks it over and it just spills all over the floor. What do I got against Gurmag Angler? He kicked Tombstalker out of a job. No new black cards, huh? How much is a cool Tombstalker? Card market. Tombstalker. Anybody got a guess? I'm looking at foil German tombstalkers from Future Sight. How much money do you think we're talking here? How much money for a foil German tombstalker from Future Sight? Was there is there just none? Can I just not find one? Oh, found one. So, if I wanted an English one, I can get an English one for four euro. If I want a German one, the only one I can find here, uh, or the first one I can find is uh, nine euro. Or uh, ten euro, it's ten euro. I'd pay that. I'd pay ten euro for a foil German Tombstalker. What's Tombstalker's name in German? Hold on, this is a mistake. There's no, there is no way in hell that I am going to show that on camera. Do you know how much pornography we look at? Do you know how much pornography I force my mods to look at? Wait, hold on. No, I meant editors. Shit. Uh, hold on. Tomb Stalker. Is it Tomb, Tomb Two bench taken? That feels like a lie. Tombstalker. Ein, ein, ein Deutsch. <laughs> what the f Of course it's not. Tombenstalken. <laughs> this is even funnier. 
Rauberschleiker? <laughs> Do you know how much pornography you forced him to watch? Hey! People said we don't do enough watch-alongs in the Discord. And I look, after a long night, I don't want to watch an a, a long day at work. I don't want to watch anime. I want to watch uh, things for grown-ups like pornography. We, I mean, honestly, we really don't. But also, I don't know how, I mean, I'm watching Downton Abbey right now. Well, I'm re-watching Downton Abbey. Do you know how funny a Downton Abbey watch-along would be in the Discord? <laughs> just just a bunch of terminally on ma online magic players just being like, Oh, shit. Are they going to let Mr. Mosley's Roses win the gardening contest for the town? Oh, fuck. Oh, no way, dude. Oh, no way. Come on, Dowager. You gotta let Mr. Mosley remember. Remember the episode when the Titanic crashed? That's literally the pilot. That's literally... Yeah, Pip knows what's up. A letter Kenny watch along? No, we need a Shorzy watch along. It's like Leonard Kenny, but good. Uh, Dragonhawk Fates Tempest. Three red red for a 5-5 five, five bird dragon with flying. It's a legend. Uh, whenever Dragonhawk enters or attacks, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of creatures you control with power four or greater. You may play those until your next end step. At the beginning of your next end step, Dragonhawk deals two damage to each opponent for each of those cards that are still exiled. What? This card's kind of wild. It's five mana, doesn't do anything to turn you play it, but it does draw you some cards and potentially kill your opponent. Like, I think I'm more excited, to, if I'm playing like a five mana dragon without haste, I'm more excited to play Bonehorde Dracosaur. Because Bonehorde Dracosaur um, has first strike, which everybody forgets. Uh, that card's like impossible to block or trade. Oh, sorry, it does, yes, it has an ETB, but like realistically, you're not using that ETB very often the turn you play it. Yeah, Terror of the Peaks is another good one. I just think there are other fives that I would want to go to before this one. But it's it's tempting, and like chances are if you played this card and resolved this card, um, you are likely going to win that game because you played a Mythic Rare. I could see myself playing this in big red just because it draws more cards. I could start doming people out, but you know, you'd pay for a skip on this card. It's still, hey, you're not too late. You're not too late. <laughs> you're never too late to give me You know what? It's like they always say. The best time to give Wheeler $5 is yesterday. The second best time to give Wheeler $5 is right now. American or Canadian dollars? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. As long as it's $5 in either Canadian or local currency. Yesterday we gave Lur $5. Somebody did give... <laughs> Somebody did donate to all of us $20. That was kind of funny. Oh, to throw things at James. Oh, I did that. Did you, did you see how we were like at 70, 700,000 bits or whatever? And somebody mentioned a million bits. Like, oh, what if we hit a million? And he was like, oh, we're never going to hit a million. Soon as I heard that, no. Shelling. We're getting in here right now. I'm, I'm, or shilling, not shelling. Sorry, I'm looking at too many otters. We were hitting that one milli. As soon as I heard that, we're hitting the one milli. How much is a million bits? Um, uh, five million dollars. Uh, it's, uh, what, 10,000 bucks? 
Spidey's a powerful motivator. You wouldn't believe how much money people give if you just tell them directly to give us some money. Am I going to look at the German names for which cards? I don't know. What do you want to look at? Anybody got a German card name they want to look up? While we're here? I kind of want to see how much MKM has German brainstorms for. Unyielding Krumar? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, that's funny because my the my the the cost in my head for a, a German foil brainstorm for masks is four hundred US or four hundred euro, about the same here. Um, this is Godonkin verbal. Is there a picture of a German one? <sighs> okay. Unyielding Kurmar. Krumar? Unbugzema Krumar? Obzidad the Ghost Council? Oh, Obzidad Ghost Council. Obzi Dobzi? What's the Deutsch Obzidad called? <laughs> Obzidat der Rat der Geister. <laughs> der Rat. This card's got to be dirt cheap, right? I would get a German foil Obzidat. Oh, yeah. Four euro? Easy. Oh, of course. Four euro from Tokyo MTG. Oh, it's another tormenting voice. Sazacaps brew. Wow, this art's great. Oh, it's Sam Gay, of course. You still have some euro? I think I have like five euro left. Ghost lawyer. I do have one American dollar on me. It's my lucky American dollar. Hey, if you want another torment, oh, it's uh no, it's a, uh, a thrill possibility, right? It's instant speed. Okay, cool. I'll I'll take additional copies of this card. However many they want to throw at us. That, that's no <clears throat> oh, there's a new um, a it's a new offspring card that I don't think is that great. This card's kind of funny, but the the Valley Flame Caller, really good art. Two and a red for a three three Lizard Warlock. If a Lizard Mouse Otter or Raccoon would deal damage to a permanent player, deals that much plus one. That's pretty good. I thank you all. Is lost for the hundred bits. Have a wonderful day. Uh, and my name is Boda. Thank you for the Prime sub. Glad to have you. Good to see him. How you doing? How you been? Thank you so much for the support. The elementals of this set. There are elementals in this set? I mean, the Price of Progress cat is probably... Probably top shelf, right? Wow, this might be the most ADHD stream that we have done in a while. Oh, I like the crab. I like the... If we're talking about just the legends... Hmm. I like Lumra for Canlander combo. Uh... Sunspine Lynx, I think, is pretty fucking good. And uh, Eddie Merck Crab is probably all right. Otter Snipe? Yeah, it, I mean, if you're playing the Otter, uh, the Thermo Alchemist Otter, this is pretty hot. What? Where's the new one? There's a, there's a, there's a Impact Tremors Lizard, right? Did I pass it already? Am I not looking at the complete set is that why 
Are you serious? Is the card gallery not updated? Man, fuck this. All right, I'm just looking at this. Oh, it's a commander card. Oh, why? But why? Gift a card for that? Oh. Hmm. Oh, there was a green card that I don't know if I talked about, even though it was previewed. I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's the Thrashy B. There's a Thrashy B in this set. This one. Uh, one green green for a 4-4 four, four reach with gift a card. When it enters, if the gift was promised, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. I mean, it's a 3-mana 4-4 four, four with uh, upside. So I imagine I'll play it in green X aggro decks. The bad raccoon. It's a 3-mana 4-4 four, four with reach. Also, just like... Yeah, I don't know how often you're going to be gifting a card with this, but um, <clears throat> it is kind of nice if it if the uh, gift a card on this ends up uh, like just blowing up an O-ring on like a haste creature or whatever. There's so many threes. Yeah, I guess that's true. I am kind of shocked that it wasn't like that you have to gift a card to blow up their thing? Is that weird? <laughs> like, like it feels like it should destroy an artifact and then if you gift a card, you can destroy an artifact or an enchantment or whatever, you know? Um, talked about all these cards. We've looked at the cute possum. Hmm. There's a mana mole. <laughs> no, I think we might be done with the main set. Oh, this art is so cute. The art in the set is so fucking good. Uh, Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, we've probably talked about the frog. I think we've talked about most of the frogs, if not all the frogs. Okay, on to the commander product. Oh, well, let's talk about the special guests first, because I think, I mean, maybe we talked about them all. We did. We did talk about them all. All right. Um, let's talk. I mean, I want to now. I want to just do this through. Is that it? What's the What's the Bloomboro Commander? Is that symbol BLC? BLC is first printing. I'm gonna move over to Scryfall for this one. Also, somebody told me to look up the anime art for Bumbleflower. Okay, that's cute. <clears throat> that's very cute. I still think this one, I like this one a bit better, but I, I do think that this is cute. Cute, super cute. Uh, we talked about, <laughs> we talked about some of these cards. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking card. Uh, Jacked Rabbit. So just a, just a heads up, we're not getting any of these cards for Gladiator, so I'm going to be evaluating these cards through the lens of Canadian Highlander. Um, or if I just think they're cool. Um, I'm not going to be talking about every single one of them. I don't give a shit about them in Commander because all cards are good in Commander, you know, all that. Uh, Jacked Rabbit. 
X, one in a white for a one, two rabbit warrior with ravenous. For those that don't remember, ravenous uh, means that it enters the battlefield with X, one, one counters on it. And if the X is five or more, you draw a card when it enters. <clears throat> Whenever Jack rabbit attacks, you create a number of one, one white rabbit creature tokens equal to Jack rabbit's power. Uh, this being a two drop is a little appealing. Like that's, Two drops are pretty easy to justify. The fact that this starts pooping out one ones immediately and that you can modify its power and toughness. Uh, obviously its power is the most important here through other means like Luminar Aspirant, Siege Veteran cards, or uh, I don't know, throwing a Skull Clamp on this card is kind of hot. Um, the fact that you can use this as a mana sink and, and pump a bunch of mana into the rabbit uh, is kind of nice. I don't... Like it being a two drop is is pretty relevant, right? Because typically the creatures that start making tokens early uh, cost three mana, like repeatedly make tokens. There's that Boros card. It's like the something knight. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like a two mana one, two that when it attacks, it puts in a token, um, but that's in Boros and it's only a two drop. This one scales well into the late game. Holds equipment, yeah, quite well. Uh, happy to take buffs for this card. Uh, yeah, the Ocelot doesn't count. The Ocelot Pride is not a real magic card. <clears throat> yet. Uh, or not yet. It, it's just, it, we that card is so fucked up. You can't judge that card to normal magic cards. Um, yeah, I, I could see this card seeing play because it's cheap. Yeah, Sky Knight Vanguard. It's cheap, repeatable token generation, scales well. Uh, good at holding equipment and buffs. And then if you draw it like late game, late game, it could just draw a card on ETB, which is kind of nice. Especially because the, the decks that I'm thinking about this card showing up in are decks that are going to play stuff like Gaius Cradle or um, uh, Fast uh, Ancient Tomb Mana sort of stuff. <clears throat> yeah, the, I love the flavor text on this card. Squash what it is and what it does the most TI flavor text. Uh, so this is a card that I genuinely thought about whether or not it would be playable in Canadian Highlander. What'd it do, baby? It's the Iceman Paul Wall. I got my mouth looking something like a crystal ball. Uh, Mermation. Four and a white for an enchantment. Birds you control get plus one, plus one and have vigilance. And at the beginning of your end step, for each spell you've cast this turn, you create a one, two bird creature token with flying named Stormcrow. Um, so the floor of this card is that you play it and you make a two, three vigilance flyer. Uh, and that's it. Like the floor, the turn you play this, if you spend all your mana to make this, you get a two, three bird. And the next turn, that's when you can pop off. And I'm not talking about like storm popping off, but like casting some cheap spells, uh, some cantrips and some removal spells, and then making uh, a block of birds is pretty exciting. The one downside for this card is that, well, for starters, it's five mana. Uh, secondly, you do need to play cards. Like you need to cast spells. And for the deck that I'm thinking of playing this card in, like a blue-white control deck, or even like Bant control, um, you just you just have turns where you don't cast spells. It's not the kind of card that you can necessarily just sit back and you know have a floor for making at least one bird a turn, which is a little bit of a pisser. Uh, yeah, you could play this in Enchantress. You just pop off, make a bunch of birds. They're good on blocking, good on killing people. Copy enchantment on this thing is kind of messed up too. Um, yeah, I I think this card is more real than like the Stormcrow meme and the five mana may lead you to believe. Um, but uh, it does, it is a little awkward in the play pattern where you just like need to play some like cycling chaff to go along with this. Yeah, it's, it's a card that I will pick up and I will like, you know, maybe find myself at a, a Friday Night Paper Fight or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I want to play this card in like Primordial Mists and whatnot. 
and just have some have some goofy goofy uh, token generation to kill people. Uh, perch protect perch protection. Four white white for an instant gift an extra turn. Create four two two blue bird creature tokens with flying. If the gift was promised, all permanents you control phase out. Until your next turn, your life total can't change and you gain protection from everything and then you exile this. Obviously not for 1v1. This is the one card I am going to talk about uh, for Commander uh, because I think this card is genuinely uh, fucking phenomenal in Commander. Um, because it's such a good way at helping another player who is far behind in dealing with a problematic opponent um this can help for like this can be like like it's the kind of card where you're like okay player a is a problem right uh we need to get rid of player a or we need to at least reset the board in such a way that um we can handle player a but there's a chance that even after like a wrath effect we are not going to be able to get that everybody on even footing. But if you give somebody an extra turn and then it goes back into the turn cycle, especially if you use this, like if you're player D, uh, like A, B, C, D, if you're player D and at the end of C's turn, you give them the extra turn and you're like, hey, I'm gonna get, and like you communicate with it. Like, I'm gonna give you an extra turn. Uh, to like try and get the board in a good position. You can, it, it's just a political card that uh, is really good at helping equalize the board, catching people up, but also doing it in a way that puts you in a position where you don't feel bad about being the one to make the initial mana investment. In like this case of like, oh, well we tried to do something and it didn't work out. Is that you still made four birds and can, you know, carry on with the game and maybe these four birds will actually help you pressure your opponent enough who knows should you just play bison if you want to make master in street fighter 6 uh if you are trying to hit master i don't think it matters which character you play there is not i i mean there are going to be certain characters that may uh get you to master quicker and Bison may be one of them. I don't know enough about Bison or like Akuma um, in in the game, but I would just say pick a character and play that character a lot and learn everything about that character. And you'll probably get there off of that. I don't know. I'm like diamond four, like almost diamond five with Lily and it's Lily. And I play like two hours a week tops <laughs> like if you just you know slow and steady and work on the fundies you'll you'll get there you'll get there <clears throat> uh i want to talk about steel bird champion because i feel like it's a card that people are going to want to play or ask about and i'm going to tell them no uh, Steelbird Champion, two and a white for a 1-1 mouse soldier with vigilance. And whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you put a 1-1 counter on this creature. Has offspring for one and a white. So for five mana, you get two of them. Um, non-creature spells. That's a lot of, uh, you know, spells, obviously, are non-creatures. Um, in fact, everything but creatures are. But it's, it's just real awkward like the strength of stuff like mana gorger hydra the three mana one one trample that says whenever anybody casts a spell you get a counter on it uh, obviously that card gets some strength from you being able to cast spells uh, as well but um your opponents are like them playing a mana mana dork just like goes neutral on power and toughness and it's just there are so many spots where against a Mana Gorger Hydra, if they're trying to dig their way out of this or like challenge it on the board, it doesn't work. Uh, challenging this on the board is very easy because you need to cast the non-creatures for this to get any bigger. So I don't think this is good enough in 1v1. Oh, <laughs> but you know, well. Well, maybe I could be convinced. If they look like this, maybe I can be convinced. Uh, 
Uh, did I? I did. I know I said I'm not going to talk about every card, but um, you got to understand, these are white cards. And... Uh... <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so cute. Tempt with bunnies. Two and a white for a sorcery. Tempting offer. Draw a card and then make a rabbit token. Then each opponent may draw a card and make a rabbit token. For each opponent who does, you draw a card and make a rabbit token. Just, it's... This card is honestly kind of messed up in Commander. Um, Like, three mana, just draw a card, make a 1-1 one, one, is totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. And if, you ever, if you've ever played Commander, you understand that Tempting Offer... Uh, yeah, people are going to want cards and bunnies. It's so cute. This art is so cute. I hope they uh, they do prints of this card because I would like to buy a print of Tempt with Bunnies. Um, <laughs> it's just... And I love it because this is such a... Um, if you've ever held a rabbit... I mean, that's not... You don't, don't hold a rabbit like this. You don't hold a rabbit like that. But if you've ever held a rabbit where you have its, you know, a hand under its butt and like you do have a hand on its belly and like you're kind of weaving your fingers through its uh, arms, this is exactly the face that they have. This is exactly what they look like. It, this is one of those cards where it is just, they put a bunch of rabbits in clothes. It's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, it's so great. <clears throat> Uh, Fortune Teller's Talent. I don't think this card's very good. It's too expensive to get going. Um, it has a weird Future Sight text to it that doesn't let you just like start chaining off the top of your library. Not a big fan. Uh, this card I do enjoy, uh, or I want to talk about it at least. Polywog Prodigy. One in a blue for a 1-3 Frog Wizard with Evolve. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell with mana value less than Polywog, or sorry, Polywog Prodigy's power, you draw a card. Uh, yeah, I think this card might have legs. The issue is finding where you're going to play it. Um, there are a lot of one mana cards that see play. There are a lot of zero mana cards that see play. Um, and this card just needs to draw one card and then you're golden, right? Um, it really just needs to draw one card and then you're off to the races. Uh, getting it to evolve is pretty easy considering it only has one power as well. Once you get this to two power, then you're like... If this card hits three power, then you have a three six, not dying to basically any piece of red removal. that is just drawing a card off of like every non-creature spell. And I think that's pretty cool. The downside is finding a home. Um, blue... Like, the blue cards like this that aren't exactly tempo-oriented, that aren't, like, control cards, they're kind of like a mid-rangey, like, not stacks, but also just, like, not... Not stacksy, but also not, like, Hull Breacher, Leovold, like, Baleful Strix cards. Like, they don't play into the blue X mid-range kind of package. So it's hard to find a home for this card, but I do I do like the uh, everything that the card says, basically. 20 Toad Toad. Um, I, why is this card called 20 Toad Toad? Like, is it because it's holding 20 babies? Like, it has 20 babies in, like, uh, it is, like, it's, they are toad. I know it's a toad. Five toes per foot, four feet. Toad, frogs have 18 toes. This is also a frog, not a toad. Interesting. 
It also says win the game on it. It's a four mana card, so I won't see some play, but you know, toads aren't real. Are frogs, frog, toads are frogs? Are toads frogs? Are you, are you serious? All toads are frogs? Holy fuck. All toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Damn, I, you know, you learn something new every day. You learn something new every day. Is this like how all crust or all crustaceans are insects? Or all, what is it? All insects are crustaceans? There was a YouTube video. Uh, a, there was a, an uh, Adam Ragusea video about uh, crustaceans and insects. I don't eat either. Oh, you really should give them a shot. Tons of protein in them. A little crunchy. Hazel's Brewmaster. A three and a black for a squirrel warlock with menace, and it's a three four. Whenever Hazel's Brewmaster enters or attacks, you exile up to one target card from a graveyard and create a food token. Foods you control have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Hazel's Brewmaster. This card is pretty fucking good. It does like an Agatha's Soul Cauldron slash uh, food fight slash combo with Devoted Druid. Like ETB, exile your Devoted Druid. Boom, infinite mana. Um... ETB, Exile, Christ, I don't know, anything. Uh, Cinder Haze Witch. Yeah, this, this card goes infinite with a bunch of things. Uh, much like Agatha's Soul Cauldron does, except this uh, is like a, it's not even a one shot. I'm gonna describe it as a one shot because it is a four mana card. Um, it's a four mana card that survives Lightning Bolt, which is at least nice. Uh, but yeah, like the idea of just like having this hit play, uh, exiling a Gristlebrand, exiling uh, a Razaketh, um, you know, obviously exiling the Devoted Druid, like we mentioned. Um, Garsh, Max. Uh, what are, yeah, you could exile Kiki Jiki. It's pretty exciting. Holy shit. Wait, what? ETBs, we exile the Kiki Jiki, tap our food to make a copy of Hazel's Brewmaster, makes a new Brewmaster. We just don't exile something else if we don't want to. Uh, we make a food, and then that food has the Kiki Jiki ability. We did it! We found out how to go infinite with Kiki Jiki. Uh, yeah, I think this card is pretty powerful as a combo card as a food fight card, as a creature combo that also plays a mid-range game card. Uh, yeah, this card rules. And it's a lot better than some of the previous ones because like, you know, commander sets have this uh, habit of rolling around. Is it Geist Catcher? They have this habit of rolling around with cards that, oh, I just want to get, I, I hate this set symbol. <laughs> just didn't want to look at the set symbol um yeah like this thing the prowling geist catcher when i looked at this car and i was like eh, you know what you could combo kill with this it's like a four mana thing you could pot into and combo kill and it happens to be a human if you want to do angel of glory's rise combos okay cool cool you know that kind of stuff uh but this sucks the brewmaster is quite good uh, this has the combo kill potential, but it's also just like a pretty powerful magic card. Uh, so I expect uh, this card to see quite a bit of play in creature combo decks, or of course the food fight decks. Uh, spoiler alert, basically every food card is worth looking at for food fight. Uh, Insatiable Frugivore, three and a black for a two, four rat berserker. 
When insatiable frug frugivore enters the battlefield, you create a food token. Then you may exile three cards from your graveyard if you do repeat this process. Um, three and a black sacrifice X foods. Creatures you control get plus X plus zero and gain menace until end of turn. So uh, there are a couple of cards that the food fight deck plays to take advantage of all the food you have uh, to overrun. It gives you, yeah, a finisher effectively. Um, one of the cards is Pippin, who is kind of messed up. Pippin being a two mana two two that draws a card in the form of Mary, has repeatable food generation, and then can tap sack four foods to give your entire team plus three plus three in haste until end of turn. That's Pippin is like one of the gold standards for this. Uh and then Knight of Sweets Revenge is another one. Four mana, enchantment, ETB, make a food. All food have tap, add green. Pay seven mana, sack it. Creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn. Or X is the number of foods you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Um, I think we are moving beyond Knight of Sweets Revenge uh, because I foresee Food Fight finding its... This is This is my prediction, is that I think... Food Fight moving forward is going to find uh, a home in being a engine-based deck with a creature combo kill, uh, especially with the Squirrely Broodmaster, whatever its name is, uh, especially with like this card. There are a couple other cards that can lead to some wild, uh, infinite shenanigans with food or, or whatever, but... Uh, basically, moving away from these cards and moving into almost like a pod deck. Like just having, you know, a bunch of creature tutors, uh, birthing pod, having a chain up the line, survival the fittest so you could set up the kill with Hazel and, uh, you know, a Gristlebrand or whatever. Um, and we just don't need cards like Knight of Sweets Revenge anymore. And Insatiable Frugivore is not... Uh, exactly Knight of Sweets Revenge, right? Obviously, like, the the um, uh, the mana production is is interesting to have. It's it's pretty good. Um, but this card is A, a human. Uh, or not a human. A, a creature. B, makes multiple food tokens. And C, not, like, it just, like, buffs your entire team and, uh, giving menace, meaning that you're actually going to be able to push damage where cards like Knight of Sweets Revenge isn't going to be able to fulfill that. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty excited to try try that deck with uh, this card as one of your like, well, I've untapped with a bunch of food. Time to kill you. Another thing is that Knight of Sweets Revenge really wants you to stockpile food. And I think the food fight deck is at its best when you are making a bunch of food and then cracking a bunch of food. Like you actually do, you take game actions using your, your tokens instead of just like stockpiling the entire time, you know? Hello, Storm God. Bother with Fiddlebender. Fiddlebender being able to turn a food into like a one mana artifact is kind of neat, but that deck really is just looking for opportunities to trim the legendary creatures it has. There are so many legendary cards in Food Fight. That's the other option that you could go for Food Fight. I think Food Fight is kind of an interesting deck if you have like a mana denial package because you just lose to Caracas like worse than any deck. <laughs> and we're just, it's so embarrassing how good Caracas is against you. Uh, these are commander cards. <clears throat> this card is also a commander card. But it's kind of neat. Like it's a, a two mana, uh, a two mana impact tremors on a creature. We just got molten. Was it molten secret keeper? There's the MH three one that has unearth. Unearth on that card is kind of interesting because it lets you pop off um, and do some combo shenanigans with that. But being two mana and just hard casting it or offspring so that you double up so that they can't just like kill this card if you're popping off with like cycling through infinite creatures with ETBs. That's kind of neat. 
yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not saying this card is a slam dunk or anything. I'm just saying that if a deck pops up that wants to play like an Impact Tremor style card, it's nice that that will be attached to a creature as well as a creature that like you can set up your combo or whatever and make sure that you have some redundancy uh, by making another token. Uh, Alchemist Talent is too much mana. Calamity of Cinders, too much mana, but I really like this card's design. I think this is pretty fucking cool. I wish this were an instant. I think if it were an instant, it would be, I mean, hashtag not a game designer, but if it were an instant, then it would, to me, feel like it actually gets the job done, you know? Not to mention, you still give people an opportunity to save their utility creatures or mana dorks with this. But it's just a little awkward when you draw it and you're like, oh, well, they just... The person with big things or a bunch of creatures has... Well, they've already made an attack, you know? It's kind of kind of weird. Kind of weird. <clears throat> but I like it. I, obviously, like the design of like convoking with all your creatures and then blowing up uh, the things uh, that your opponents have or whatever is, is pretty neat. Is this more of a Highlander viewpoint? Yes, I'm talking about these cards through the lens of Canadian Highlander right now. Although there are some cards where like this Calamity of Senders card, I'm like, hey, this is kind of neat design. Um, yeah, this card's way too expensive. This card's kind of neat. It's uh, the Prosperous Bandit. It's a bit too expensive, but like three mana for a 2-2 two -two first striker. When it deals combat damage to a player, you make that many tapped treasure tokens. And it has offspring for one. First strike is no joke. This this keyword ability is brutal. Um, real brutal. But it does, like... This can, like, start making a bunch of tokens. Uh, you know, fairly early. But if you're evaluating a card, how good it is off, like, Mana Crypt and Ancient Tomb, then, like... I don't know. It should really be killing people. And this card doesn't really kill people. Uh, I don't like this bird. This card's kind of funny. <clears throat> it's an anti-treasure squirrel. Which is kind of funny. Uh, this badger is so happy. Which is wild, because badgers are never happy. I don't like the bird in big red. No, that, that bird is very expensive, right? It's just a bird. Five mana, four, four. Oh, it has flying in haste. Mm. No, I still don't like it. Yeah, look at look at this badger. Badger's frolicking, enjoying its life. First time you've ever seen a happy badger. Um, It's not very good. But... Very happy badger. <clears throat> Ever oh, this is the double hideaway one, right? Yeah. Six five hideaway hideaway deals combo damage to a player. Nope. Gormon's talent. <laughs> yeah, I'll read this card. Sure, why not? One green for an enchantment class. Uh, during your turn, artifacts you control are foods. And that means you can pay two and tap sack gain life. Uh, level two for three mana. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, you make a 3-3 three, three raccoon. And level three for four mana. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. Um, I think this is too much mana for what it does. It doesn't come with a food token, which is a little awkward. Like, there's no way for it to feed into the rest of the card. Um, and then this is a lot of mana to, to pump into it. I don't think I'm playing this. It If this card were in Gladiator, I would maybe consider it, but I, not for here. Well, you get a 3-3 on their turn if you have other food, because this only says during your turn. Which, like, in the right deck is not going to be that big of an ask, but...
I kind of wish this was like a confluence root cast apprenticeship. I do like this card. I think this artwork is incredible. I just like that they're all doing their they're all they're all doing their best, you know. I just a rabbit and goggles is also very cute. And the the like frog and goggles is like ex inspecting its work. Very cute. Uh nope, myriad thickest in the thicket powerful name a target creature were x oh five mana never mind <clears throat> this is a card i'd play in gladiator i'd consider playing this in gladiator trail tracker scout one in a green for a one three tap to add mana of any color and when you expend eight return up to one permanent from your graveyard to your hand not legal in Gladiator, but uh, makes me wish it was. I'd play this in like the big green Eldrazi kind of deck. Uh, we talked about this card. I really like this card. Not in competitive 1v1. Just look at how simple it is. Look at how simple and satisfying it is. Three red and a green for a 6-6 six, six elemental wolf with trample. Enchantment spells you cast from your hand have cascade. Great. It's so straightforward. It is just... Honestly, if you didn't have this reminder text, right? Just two lines of text. Um, it has a... Hey, you have to cast them from your hand so that you don't just like combo, combo, combo. Um, this is a card that plants, uh, it's a flag, tells you what it's going to do, uh, is big, like it's got a big stat line, but also not that like out there. It's fun because Cascade is a lot of fun. It's flexible, but not too flexible because it's color identity is a bit limiting as to where people typically play Enchantress. Uh... Yeah, it's fucking great. And it's like so satisfying to play, right? Because Enchantress decks have a bunch of cards that say when you cast enchantments, you draw cards, right? That's literally the Enchantress part of Enchantress. Well, I guess enchantments are the Enchantress part of Enchantress. But Enchantress is draw cards when you cast the thing, right? So like being able to just like, I have my wolf. I'm going to play a, a enchantment, draw a card. I'm going to cascade into another enchantment, draw a card. And these enchantments hit. Maybe I have another enchantment. Maybe I don't. Who cares? Yeah, look at this. This is a card from 2024. It You don't need to overload cards with words. This is cool. This is powerful. The artwork is... Well, it's a little rude. This is how you make a commander in 2024. <clears throat> uh, this augmenter is appealing but not that good uh, yeah you're not very good we're man a 3-5 <laughs> the odd acorn gang it's me and the boys <laughs> it's me and the boys Five mana, five, five, menace, trample, reach. Squirrels you control have tap target. Squirrel gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. And whatever, one or more squirrels you control will deal combat damage to a player, draw a card, which includes itself. Uh, yeah, I don't think this card's uh, going to be playable but uh, in 1v1, but very cool. Which one am I? I'm this. I, I got to be this one. The one with the ears up and the big bushy tail. That's got oh what nah I, right there. Right there. That's me. Plotting and scheming. I'm out here scheming. Uh no, these I don't think the old commanders are coming to arena. Did they last time? Do we get the alt commanders on arena? I imagine they, they're just going to give us the same, like, 
We did? Oh, then we might get them for Arena. But we don't get them this time? We can't have shit. Man, we don't get shit. Choose the bonus sheet. Just give us both. Give us both. Why not give us everything? Let us spend money on cards. Uh, Fisher's Talents. I remember this card being okay. Two green and a blue. What are you, what are you doing? My neighbors have a blender that is so loud and it sounds, it sounds like they are grinding bones every time they run it. Two green and a blue for an enchantment class. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library and you can reveal it if it's a land card. You create a one, one blue fish creature token if you reveal the card this way, then you draw a card. Level two for a green and a blue. If you would create a fish token, create a 3-3 blue shark token instead. And level three for four mana. If you would create a shark token, create a 4-4 blue octopus creature token instead. Uh, so this is a four mana. You get to draw a card every turn. It's a howling mine. It's a one-sided howling mine that um, you can also reveal the lands. Like you go like, oh, oh, it's a land. Uh, make a fish, and then I draw that land. Or you go, oh, oh, it's not a land. I'm just going to draw a card. Uh, that's pretty cool. Level two means that every time you reveal a land, you get a 3-3. Three, three, and it's only two mana to upgrade. You don't get the, the, like, it's a little awkward to play this and then have the mana to be able to get to level two immediately. Probably not happening that often. But yeah, four mana draw, uh, four mana one-sided howling mine. I don't know. I could see this card actually playing. Huh? Wait. No, 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 no. You still get to draw a card no matter what, right? Yeah, you always draw. There's a period here. You may reveal it if it's a land card. Create a 1-1 one, one fish if it's revealed this way. Then draw a card. Period. Then draw a card. Yeah, you always draw. I could actually see myself playing this in um, a uh, in the like curb your enthusiasm deck, like blue green like time walks. I could I could play this in blue green time walks. Absolutely. Four mana, make a bunch of chump blockers, draw an extra card every turn. E even if like four mana enchantment that does that, right? That's pretty sick. I could see myself playing this card. Very narrow application, uh, but I don't know. I just love, I, look, I love drawing extra cards and it's not symmetrical, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> and then, yeah, obviously if you get to this level, then great. But I got other plans. I've got other plans. Holy shit, this card's... Oh, it just makes an octopus and gets to make more octopus. Cool. Uh, oh, I remember being pissed off at this card. <laughs> Mr. Foxglove. Uh, two green, white, and a blue for a 3-5 legendary fox rogue with lifelink. Whenever Mr. Foxglove attacks, draw cards equal to the number of cards in the defending player's hand minus the number of cards in your hand. If you didn't draw cards this way, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. What? Why do you need that last line of text? It It's so... Like, I... Okay, so you can tie that last line of text in with the first one because the idea is that, hey, I haven't been able to play my cards because my cards are all large, like, creatures or powerful threats, right? So that's the, like, hey, if you're playing this card and you just have so many cards in hand, then don't worry, you'll get to put a big thing into play. Like, that's the, 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 the build around, right? 
but that sucks. That's boring and not doesn't give the biggest vibes of Bant. I mean, it kind of does because green has like Elvish Piper type cards, but like, isn't this card just cool enough by itself of like when it attacks, you're going to draw a shitload of cards because you are incentivized to attack the player with the most cards in their hand, right? It's without this last line of text, you have a creature that incentivizes you to take game actions and play cards. And if you want to guarantee to play more cards and take more game actions, you're incentivized to include cheaper cards. And you know what some of the cheapest cards in the game are? Combat tricks. So you have a bant card, a bant creature that can be built around playing combat tricks and protection spells. And you're just like giant growth, <laughs> like giant growth, giant growth, giant growth, attack you, draw cards back because you've played a bunch of like temporary effects. And now you have a massive life linking attacker. That's cool. Even without the uh, pump spells or whatever, you are still incentivized to attack the player that has the most cards in hand which means that you may change your target based on whoever's in first place, uh, whoever's just had a big splashy turn. And that's neat. I like that. I like this card as a, like, I'm not always attacking the same person. I'm trying to keep an even game. Um, and because I'm always attacking with this, uh, I might get hit in response, people might retaliate. So the lifelink gives me some cushioning or the, I want to empty my hand so that I get the biggest payoff I'm drawing cards. And because I have lifelink and because it's on attack, I'm incentivized to play cards that make my attacks safer or more impactful. So I want to play shadow rifts and aqueous forms and giant growths and all that. And yeah, I'll get to gain a bunch of life because I'm casting a bunch of pump spells. This last line of text, I don't like it. It feels so unnecessary and is very unfortunate considering how cool the Gruul Commander is to have this. I wouldn't mind actually building a version of Mr. Foxglove, a Mr. Foxglove Commander deck, and just ignoring this last line of text. Kind of want to buy this card and then just take a Sharpie to the last line of text. And then play with some Wizards employees. <laughs> play with some R&D employees at like Magic Cons. Mm. Creatureless Mr. Foxglove. That's actually kind of fun. Yeah, I'd do that. Creatureless Mr. Foxglove is kind of sick. To Sharpie on a profit sleeve? No, I'm sharpening on the fucking card. I am vandalizing my Mr. Fox Club. Uh, and that's it. There's also sort of the squeak, sort of the squeak, which is quite cute. But yeah, that's that's it for Bloomboro. That's it for Bloomboro. Um, yeah, I don't think it's that much of a surprise that this may just be my favorite set of the year and potentially favorite set of the past 10 years, like off of aesthetic alone, off of um, the the mechanics seem to pretty, be pretty cool, pretty fun. Uh, the artwork, like it feels like Magic the Gathering when I was a child, you know? For bo both the cards, like both the artwork and the mechanics, honestly, like obviously the rate and the numbers on these cards are going to be a lot more push than stuff from, uh, you know, when I was uh, a young lad playing Magic the Gathering. But you have a bunch of French vanilla cards. You have a bunch of combat keywords. You have cards with downsides. Like how many... How many cards here give your opponents other cards? Like, 
sure when you gift a card these cards all do something additional but this is like kind of shocking to have this as a mechanic in a modern day set right yeah this is this is my jam and frankly i am kind of done with a lot of the worlds of magic the gathering um i'm pretty checked out from stuff like ravnica i'm pretty checked out with anything to do with phyrexians and dominaria like i just don't care i much i would much rather prefer to um visit worlds and just watch the inhabitants interact with each other and get little glimpses into the lives of the inhabitants like look at this card finding a hidden patch of glow berries is almost as joyful as eating them almost right like mechanically this just makes three rabbit tokens visually you see three rabbits you get it you read into the flavor text you ask yourself what are these rabbits doing well they're all jumping for joy because they've seemingly discovered something important because this rabbit's holding this up this one's doing a fist pump this one's jumping into the air doing like a yatta and then we got the flavor text being like finding these hidden berries is so much fun and it's only second to eating them, you know? And it's by a character called Miss Bumbleflower. Let's fucking go. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, this is exactly uh, what I was hoping Bloomboro would be. Uh, visually, it is delivered entirely. Uh, the yeah, Mechanically, we'll have to play with the cards. Um, it seems like the power level is in a pretty good slot. Um, obviously the artwork is cute. I just, I mean, I'm going to keep talking about the artwork, how cute it is. I really like the themes that they tied to all of the different critters, like otters with prowess and spell casting. The frogs have all this weird, like creature interaction, uh, you know, squirrels and foraging and sacrificing food and, you know, bats and life game. Like it fucking rules. It Evil kicks ass. Eggs. Um, and that's, I'm so excited because I am so incredibly just deflated about Duskmorn. <laughs> I, I just, I can't believe how quickly I changed, my tune changed for Duskmorn. Like, here, let me, let me fetch some Duskmorn. Let me fetch some Duskmorn stuff. I can't believe that this is a Magic the Gathering set. Because, like, this is what we... Hold on. I'm trying to set this up in a way that is, like... You know, eggs, visually eggs, striking. E -double -G -S eggs. So excited for Duskmorn. Or I was so excited for Duskmorn because this was the image that they gave us. And I was like, holy shit. It's a horror set. The entire world is one giant mansion. And this is the imagery that you're showing me? We're getting some Bloodborne ass, like... We, we are getting like, I hate to use the word cerebral in a genuine way, but we are like hitting this midway point of the Innistrad horror and also like Phyrexian kind of monstrosities uh, without the like body horror necessarily. And then we got fucking televisions and uh, like, horror movie <laughs> chainsaw axe murdering things and i was just like oh okay cool not my jam don't really like televisions in my magic the gathering
I mean, Ravnica did it too with the MKM, and uh, I was also not down to clown with that. Yeah, this this feels like Magic the Gathering, which is not something you get to say a lot anymore, uh, unfortunately. This uh, this rules. Blo Bloomboro fucking rules. It's, uh, yeah. Sets way too late to take advantage of the Stranger Things uh, hype. Neon Dynasty had computers. Yeah, I'll give that a pass because it's in the future. And the whole thing is like techno like the techno technical technological boom that they got from being able to like, you know, uh, take advantage of the spirits and, and the the uh, the mana and the plane and all that. Yeah, it, uh, I'm I'm into this. Uh, I I am infinitely more interested in this than uh, Duskmorn. So yeah. Anywho, uh, I'm gonna call it there uh, because I am exhausted and I have been streaming uh, for well, I mean for here this is a short stream, but uh, I've been a busy boy these past couple of days, and I'm gonna be even busier tomorrow for the Bloomboro PPR. Uh, the Bloomboro pre pre-release tomorrow morning, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we're gonna be playing some Bloomboro. We have some Cracker Packs recorded. Uh, I've got my deck. I don't want to spoil anything, but Surge can go to hell. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I got some cute. I got some cute cards. I got some cute cards. <laughs> how many bunnies you on i did open some rare rabbits i will say that um but you will you'll have to tune in to find out you'll have to tune in to find out if <laughs> you yes fewer than surge unfortunately um yeah I'm gonna call it there. Thanks for watching. Let me, I don't know, drop you kids off somewhere. I don't know who even streams at this time. This is, this is so late. Here you go. Go watch some, go watch some uh, modern from like, I don't know when this was. There's no way this is modern. No, this is old standard. Go watch a Grand Prix from like 2018 and I'll see y'all next time. Okay, bye.